Hi everyone, let me ask you a question. Have you ever tried to explain what you do to your family and friends and gotten a blank look? Or is fear holding you and your online business back right now? Now if you answered yes to either of those, you're going to love this month's free newsletter. How do you get a copy? Head on over to writecom.com now. And by the way, if you want to make more money with your online business, you are going to love our coffee bean money making idea inside. So head over to writecom, that's W R I T E C O M E dot com, and you'll find the newsletter waiting for you over there. Hi, this is Barry here, and you are very, very welcome to today's podcast episode from writecom.com. And today's podcast episode is entitled Five Reasons Why You Shouldn't Get Upset at Hearing the Word No. Now, what does the word no mean to you? Does it make you cringe? Does it make you feel disappointed? Does it make you feel that life shouldn't be this way? Or maybe you're one of those people who take it on the chin and just keep moving forward. You know, when you think about it, how you handle hearing the word no could be the thing that separates you from the life you want. You know, although it can be painful at times, I'm going to give you five reasons why you shouldn't get disappointed at hearing the word no. Now, the first thing I would say to you is that most times it's never personal. You know, a lot of us believe that when we hear the word no, it's directed toward us. It means that we weren't good enough, we weren't talented enough, or that we were lacking in some way. But chances are good it wasn't for any of those reasons. Sometimes a no can be for a reason that we aren't even aware of. You know, sometimes it could be that we are just in the wrong place, at the wrong time, asking the wrong person for that decision. Or it could be maybe that person on the other side is looking at you and they're saying to themselves, well, this person is applying for this job here. They're overqualified. And I know if I give them this job because they're overqualified, I know that they'll get bored. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say no to them now so they can go on and find a job that's perfect for them. Or for example, if you were maybe applying for a movie role, you could be turned down because you just aren't the type of person that they are looking for. It's got nothing to do with you at all. It's just the picture they have in their mind of that character. And if you don't fit that character, well, then you're going to hear a no. So sometimes you have to take on a no as being nothing personal, but it's just a decision by someone on the other side. And maybe they are doing it for the right reason. Maybe they're doing it for your benefit. Even though it's painful for you to hear no, sometimes it could be for the right reason that they are giving you that answer. Now, the second thing I would say to you is that um, there's a bigger ratio of ratio of no's to yeses in the world. You know, when you think about it, no's and yes's aren't equally distributed, kind of 50-50. You know, if anything, there's probably a higher ratio of no ratio of no's compared to yes's in the world. And when you think about life like that, you'll start to realize that, well, you are probably going to have to go through a long string of yes's, or pardon me, a long string of no's before you are going to come to a yes. You know, even for example, if you were trying to find a partner in life, the chances are good you're probably have to going to have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince or your princess. And you need to be aware of that as well too. When you're going through your business, whatever challenges you're going through, you are probably going to be met with a string of no's before you are going to finally get that yes because there is a higher ratio of no's out there than there are yeses. So keep that in mind. Now, the third thing I would say to you is that anything great is guarded by a wall of no's. You know, if you're going to go after anything great in life, be prepared for life to test you. Because it wants to know if you really want that thing, if you deserve it, and if you are prepared to fight for it. You know, wouldn't you want to see if you were given the keys of the kingdom to the right person? You wouldn't just hand it over to anyone. You would probably put them through some ceremony where you would test their skills and their stamina and how willing they were to, you know, to act for to act toward winning this goal. So you would put them through a lot of different events, a lot of challenges or whatever to see that the right person won before you handed over the keys. And life is going to be like that too. You know, even though everybody wants a six pack, everybody wants a Ferrari, a mansion, and it's cute to tell the world all the different things that you are after. 
But life has a different view on that. It's not going to hand that goal over to any Tom, Dick or Harry. If it was, everybody would be driving around Ferraris. Everybody would be living in mansions. So the next time you hear a no, it could be maybe that life is testing you and it's asking you, are you the type of person I should be giving this goal to? And it could be maybe saying to you, I want to see how far you can go. I want to see how many no's you can take before you give up. I want to see if you are the type of person that I am handing the keys of this goal or this dream over to you. If you are the right person for this. And sometimes life tests us that way. And sometimes the biggest goals that we go after are met with a wall of no's. And you keep needing to kind of bang up against it again and again and again before life eventually says, here's the doorway, in you go. You are the type of person that I am looking for. And the fourth thing I would say to you is a no now doesn't mean a no forever. You know, a lot of us decide, well, if I heard no once, well, that means I'll never be able to do that or I can never go back there again. Or, you know, we always feel that it's kind of a a line in the sand or it's a wall in front of us and we just can't get beyond it. But you never know, the no that you might have got today mightn't be a no tomorrow. It mightn't be a no next week or next month because sometimes a no doesn't live forever. You know, I remember hearing a story about the great um, Sylvester Stallone who made it a mission to become an actor. You know, he wanted to to become an actor so much that what he used to do was he used to go around all the cast and agencies. And at one point, I think he had actually gone for something like 120 auditions or whatever. But the funny thing was there was only like something like 60 agencies or maybe there might have even been less but if we just say there were 60 agencies that would mean that he went back to all of those casting agencies twice for another audition for them to say no to him again and I'm sure by the time he went through them all he had probably planned that he was going through the exact same route again he was going to go through all them agencies one more time until eventually somebody crumbled and somebody eventually gave him a yes now what happened was He was sitting in a waiting room one day and the casting director or the casting agency was just fed up with him hanging around the building. And just to get him out of the the building, he was just so frustrated looking at him all the time that he just says, here, I've got a film coming up that Woody Allen is doing. He's looking for a a couple of hoodlums um, to play a small part in the movie. I'll give you this part just to get you out of here. And that kind of started off his movie career. Even though he'd been to those casting agencies again and again and again, he never took a no as kind of being set in stone, that a no today mightn't be a no tomorrow. So just keep that in mind that it's not a line in the sand, it's not a wall that's going to block you off for the rest of your life, that maybe you're a no now, you might hear a yes maybe next week or maybe next month. So don't, you know, keep that in mind that it's not a permanent thing that you mightn't get by. And number five, I would say to you that sometimes a no could be the best thing for you. You know, the job that you missed out on, the house that just slipped through your fingers or the person that turned you down could have been the best thing that happened to you. You know, times when I look back at some of my biggest disappointments, maybe not getting the girl of my dreams, maybe not finding the house or not, you know, being approved for buying a house in a certain area or maybe not getting that job You know, sometimes weeks and months later, I look back and I say, thank God I didn't get that job. Because if I did get that job, I wouldn't be in the one I'm in now. And if I did buy that house in that area, I wouldn't be living in the house that I'm with now. And sometimes you find out that although that girl was good looking and you thought you were perfect for her, sometimes you find out maybe that she was a bit of a head wrecker. And sometimes it was fate that kind of pushed you away. And sometimes you can look back at those things and thank God or thank life or thank the universe that they decided that that person or that house or that job wasn't right for you. And by hearing no, it allowed that other good thing to come into your life. So that's what I want you to keep in mind today. Sometimes, as I said, sometimes when we hear no, we take it personally. We think it's a permanent thing and we feel that, you know, it's got something to do with us. But most times it's nothing to do with us. Sometimes it can be the best thing that could happen to you. And sometimes maybe hearing no right now could open up a better opportunity for you. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next week and next month. So don't take to be disheartened by hearing a word no sometimes it could be the best thing that ever happened to you so keep your chin up and keep moving forward and as i said be prepared in this world there is a higher ratio of no's than yeses and you may have to go through a string of no's before you finally get to that yes have a lovely day bye-bye 
Thanks for joining us today. If you'd like more from the rightcome.com podcast, be sure to subscribe now for more tips, tricks, and ideas you can use to make more money from your words. See you in the next episode.